Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on why Recruit CRM is the best pull on alternative for your recruitment agency. I'm Chavi, Assistant Content Manager at Recruit CRM, and I will be your host and moderator for today's session. It's great to see that we have a lot of people already joining in, so you guys can engage with each other. You can drop a hello in the chat box and let us know where you're joining us from. We would love to hear it. And before we can officially start with the session, I quickly want to ask everybody a question. Can everybody hear and see me and all of the panelists correctly? A quick thumbs up in the chat box, chat box would be very helpful. Yeah, all right, loud and clear. All right, cool. Okay. So I'd like to let everyone know that towards the end of the webinar, we'd have a Q&A round during which we will be taking questions from all of the audience members. So feel free to drop in your questions using the Q&A options on your screens at any point throughout the presentation. Okay, mm -hmm. let's move on to the next slide. All right. All right. Okay, a quick introduction about us and who we are. Recruit CRM is, is a next-gen ATS plus CRM software serving over 1,500 customers in 100 plus countries with a global team of 200 plus experts. Let's move on to the next slide. Yep, okay, so what do we do? Our mission is quite simple. It's, it's to enhance the efficiency of recruitment businesses all over the world. We achieve this by providing a software that speeds up business development, simplifies recruitment processes with smart workflow automation and boosts your daily productivity. All these efforts that we do are tailored to help you and your business grow. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Yep. Yeah. okay. Now I'm thrilled to introduce our speakers for the day. First, we have, we have Charlie. We have Charlie Bebu. Charlie is a tech recruiter and handles records at Urban Linker. He is a general engineer specializing in entrepreneurship who found his passion for tech recruitment back in 2017. He combines technical knowledge with recruitment expertise, identifying top talent, and building strong client relationships. Okay, let's move on. Okay, next we have Jim Wright. Jim is the Senior Vice President of Sales at GTN Technical Staffing. He excels in driving GTN's mission to identify and recruit the top 10% of IT professionals. His expertise spans IT, sales, technical recruiting, vendor management, VMS, and much more, making him a very important figure in GTN success. All right, next. Next we have Jared Wilson. Jared is the Director of Recruiting and Tech De Delivery at GT and Technical Staffing. With over 10 years of experience, he leads a team of 20 plus technical recruiters, managing performance, profitability, and goes across contract, permanent, S and SOW sectors. He has been a key to GTN's growth and expanding it into new markets. All right, moving on. Yep, and finally, we have our founder and CEO, Sean Malapurkar. Sean has built a cutting edge ATS plus CRM software, helping recruiters scale their revenue and teams across 100 plus countries globally. In the past seven years, he has grown Recruit CRM to be the highest rated recruitment software across all major software review boards. So yeah, that's that's all of our panelists for the day, all of our speakers. And I'd like to welcome everybody one, one final time. It's super exciting to have everybody here. All right, cool. All right. So that's mostly it from me from the beginning. So yeah, we can get started with the session now. Shana, you can take over now. Fun, okay. fun. Hey, guys, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, Charlie, Jared, Jim, uh, love that you guys are taking an hour out of your life uh, to do this with us. We really appreciate it. And and thanks for everyone else for coming in and, and seeing what this is all about, right? So uh, so why why did we even do this webinar? Uh, we've, we've been in the rec recruiting business for a long, long time, right? I've been around recruiters since I was five years old, started Recruit CRM seven years ago with my with my dad. And and we're serving a lot of recruitment businesses. Uh, and we noticed a theme about, about one in four out of all of our 1,500 customers uh, have, have essentially moved to us from Bullhorn. And so I thought it was, uh, we thought it was important for us to do a session talking to some of these uh, business, business leaders uh, and customers who've moved over from Bullhorn to us uh, to talk about what made them move, what they like or dislike about about both Bullhorn and us, and what what made that transition happen, uh, and I I thought we'd we'd have a pointed discussion just uh, just specifically around that topic. Uh, the the goal the goal today is to tell you a little bit more about Recruit CRM um, and and maybe how uh, if if you are a current uh, Bullhorn customer, how we have some things that are different or maybe slightly better than what Bullhorn has. Uh, and that might interest you in in taking a look. So let's get started, right? So so uh, now this this is this is this is this is this is a this is a fun uh, and pun intended 
on on why uh, uh, why folks like Jim, Jared, and Charlie have have, have moved over from Bullhorn to us. So uh, Bullhorn is a successful software company. They've been around for over 20 years. So they're obviously doing some things right. But if someone's moving an ATS or CRM system, there's there's generally different reasons every 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 business or company moves. And just off of my personal experience, uh, there's there's a few reasons like I've seen that that lead people to sort of uh, sort of get out right. So of all the people we've worked with, and we'll we'll get to the individual cases with 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 Charlie and Jim's teams as well. The few things I have personally seen is like one, a lot of people aren't or maybe not super thrilled with the with with complex contracting that comes with Bullhorn. So in many cases, uh, you sign a long, you know, you do a demo and right after you you essentially get a contract and you sign it and then you're locked in for 12, 24, 36 months before you might have it had a chance to really pilot and like get into the system. Uh, you if if you ever want to move out, you're in many cases required to give a 60 or a 90 day notice where you don't really have uh, you don't have the flexibility to make a decision to move in or move out based on what works for you, but versus what's what's written in the contract. And those contracts are normally enforced, enforced pretty strongly. Uh, so it's, there's there's no easy, easy way out once you get in. Uh, there's also a little bit of lack of flexibility between mixing up monthly and annual users. Uh, most businesses have some portion of seasonal users where you have uh, maybe summer interns or new employees that are coming in who might need a license uh, for a little bit. But if once those interns are gone or if some a new employee doesn't work out or someone gets off on maternity, uh, you don't want to be paying for those licenses when you when you don't have those people. And, and, and in many cases, with more traditional software businesses or companies like Bullhorn, once you add something to a contract, you're basically paying for it. Uh, for the entire duration of the contract, and there's no easy way to add just just monthly add-ons, uh, add-on users. And in in most cases, and this might not be true in every case, but in most cases we've seen, if you need additional training post implementation, uh, and you need dedicated training uh, for your team, uh, you generally need to pay for it. You you if you if you if you need someone from their solutions team. Uh, to come in and sit with you and, and do additional training. You're generally paying either by the hour or the day or by the project. So those are those are some reasons I have personally seen why people consider a change. But you know, I'll I'll take it to our speakers here who've actually done the change, right? So so Charlie to <laughs> Charlie to get started, like like why did you guys move out of Bullhorn? What 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 worked maybe? And I'm sure there's some things that were good and and what wasn't so good that made you move out. Um, yeah, so I feel like we didn't feel it the same way uh, Jared and uh, Jim uh, did, but yeah, we mainly left because of the, the, the customer support actually was a, a big reason and uh, the customer success relation we had with them. Uh, we actually did not have uh, almost any contact with uh, with our CSM, um, at least before we, we, we told them we wanted to leave. So yeah, and opening a ticket was always something quite difficult actually. Um, so yeah, there was not really responsive in the, in the replies and yeah, so I don't know, maybe it's treated in different ways in, in, uh, in the U S and, and in Europe. Um, I don't know, but that's the way we felt it. Um, and we also had issues with, uh, the LinkedIn integration, which is a huge part of our processes, uh, um, in, in, in on a daily basis. Um, actually the funny fact is that we found out about this native integration with Bullhorn the very day we wanted to to announce we want we want to leave um because our CSM told us uh, okay so you don't know but there is a native integration with LinkedIn so we we wasn't even aware of that and uh and even when using it in the meantime it wasn't um a hundred percent perfect because like not every action we performed on LinkedIn wasn't returning back and uh, wasn't synced on the on the on, on Boulogne. so even even that was not perfect so yeah we wanted uh, to get something new and, and to move on on, on new base and, and this is interesting and like like you said right perhaps the experiences are also different based on where you're at now you're 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 in France and in, in Europe and there's probably a different team serving you and and uh, Jim and Jared are in Dallas Texas and they're, you know right in bang in the middle of America center south and and 
they likely have a different team serving them. So like uh, Jim, Jared, what, what were maybe we'll go one by one, Jim, what, what was your experience like? What was good about it? I'm sure there are certain things that were good. And and what wasn't good that, that made you decide, you know, to try something else? Well, I think. I think the uh, the support we had, if we called in to help desk, the support I always felt was very solid. Never had any issue with it. Um, in fact, I found them to be very responsive. Um, really, you alluded to cost. I think that that was actually one of the big reasons for us. Um, you know, you have to have a user license to have an API. You have to have a user license for this. You have to have a user, user license for that. And we ended up having multiple user licenses that frankly weren't assigned to human being. It was assigned to a technical process. And when we wanted to enhance the reporting, it was an all or nothing proposition. We had to buy a reporting license for every single user, whether that user existed as a human being or not. Yeah. And, you know, to be really blunt, that doesn't feel very that doesn't make me feel like they care about me. Got it. That makes me feel like they care about this is our process and you're going to conform to it or too bad. And that is, you know, Bullhorn is a good product, but yeah. if you want something unique or special, it's kind of a too bad, so sad, which I, I, I understand, but it's more of a, you just can't get, they, they just don't, it just doesn't feel like they care about you as an individual. Yeah. And, right? and, you are uh, and what your individual needs are. Yeah. And What's it's that? not like, you're, and it's not like you're a tiny two person team. You're reasonably significant business giving them tens or even a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, it was more than that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be blunt. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a good, solid, reliable product, yeah. but we wanted to do better. Yeah. And, and you know, and um, they were slow to move, slow to change, and any changes they ever made, they were going to charge you for it. Um, and so I think we were looking at, we just want to kind of reset. Uh, there's There's got to be better products out there that are taking advantage of the new technology because, you know, we were on send outs, which Bullhorn bought. We resisted moving to Bullhorn for three years. We finally migrated to Bullhorn, which in our opinion was kind of a step down in functionality. And in all the years we were on Bullhorn, we never saw any practical improvements. Improvements that would help us do our job better, cleaner, faster. Yet there's all this technology happening out there, but we weren't really getting, getting access to any of it. We weren't seeing that in our product. And when it was made available, it was at a huge additional expense. So it just kind of made sense after a certain point, there's got to be a product out there that can do all the things we want as part of what you pay for, got it. Uh, not a la carte, but all together in one product. Brilliant. And 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 to go in, go to Jared, because Jared, you spend a lot more time with the actual recruiting operations and system setup. And you've also worked a lot, a lot more with your account manager with us. Jim alluded to having great like reactive support as in you go in and you ask for help and you get it pretty well. How was the proactive customer success management or like your relationship with your account manager there? Was that very proactive? Was that as good as the reactive support or no? I never really enacted, ever interacted with our customer success manager. Um, I Other only names. were, yeah, I guess I don't even know who it was. If anybody, they would have spoken to Jim. Um, you know, I, I, I called into support quite often, um, and would have issues. It was always something basic and they would always give a you know quick response. Sometimes it would be a fix or that's just how bullhorn works. Um, I feel a lot of the times when I've had those issues and I've, I've brought them up to, in this case, our CRM and you guys, it's more of okay, trying to understand why we try to do it. And then some of those issues have been fixed for us. Go, well, that's a good idea. Let's try to implement that. But what I'll say, and I'll kind of play off what Jim said is, you know, one of the big reasons we left, and I know Jim and I had talked about moves for years. I think really what made that last one or kind of the last straw was a product 
interviewed a new product and talked it up and I got on the demo to do the product. And by the, at the, I was all excited. And at the end of it, it wasn't their product. It was an internal third party or as a third party tool that you had to go outside and buy that was native inside Bullhorn. Okay. But, and I was like, I don't know. That just, it threw me off quite a bit and it, and it, infuriated me a little bit because we just spent all that time learning about a new product that wasn't going to be native it wasn't a bullhorn product it was another third-party tool that we could go out and buy and that's just a third party sales pitch, essentially right like uh, yeah it was it was an hour-long sales pitch for somebody else's product and at the end of it, it that's one of the things i didn't like about bullhorn um to be is you know at the end of the day bullhorn can do anything and everything and I truly believe that, but you're going to be buying 20 different tools to do it. Makes total sense. Ooh. And couldn't do integration internally. I couldn't do, you know, rep custom reporting internally. I couldn't add the AI piece internally. I couldn't do X, Y, Z. I, I could go buy the product and it would work, but you know, and 15 vendors that you have to pay and you have to work with to keep Bullhorn to do what you want to do. Got it. Makes total sense. And 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 now this is this is the flip of that question, right? The next step, right? So there's a bunch mm -hmm. of reasons uh, that prompted you to say like, let's see what what else is out there. Uh, and I'll go in the same order. Uh, but Charlie, what what made you guys, you and the team at Urban Linker, and you were you were you were sort of key to that decision? Why did you decide to pick Recruit CRM? Because you you probably looked at two, three, four, five. Maybe more different tools. Uh, you're on mute, Charlie. Classic. So, so yeah, we, we we've been through um, quite a lot of tools, uh, and was actually surprised that uh, we were we were surprised that not that much was was fitting our needs, uh, just in terms of ATS plus CRM. It wasn't that that uh, that often, um, and yeah, we could CRM. Like that's the one that stood out maybe the most directly, uh, because of the features and and also the regular process, the, the regular updates uh, that you talked about, uh, Jim. Um, and actually the the sales pitch, the the relation we had since the beginning with um, the support team and including you, uh, Sean, was a lot of game changer as well. Uh, we are still wondering how you can. Answer that fast emails uh, while running uh, such company. So yeah, that's something that like made a huge difference uh, with what we knew uh, on Bullhorn. Um, and yeah, like we we, we knew also that um, you guys were working with a uh, with with Bullhorn uh, former user uh, since a long time, and we had a bit of apprehension. Uh, with the migration, uh, because we were working on uh, on Bullhorn since ten years, so we didn't knew very well what was uh, waiting us, and um, and actually it it has been really smooth. Uh, Diksha, our CSM, and and the migration team uh, did an amazing job on that. So yeah, we we relied on the fact also that uh, Recruit CRM has actually um, is is quite. Um, uh, close to to Boulogne in terms of some the, the core uh, the core features we were using uh, and uh, and we knew it would be helpful with the change management uh, of the teams that like it would be more more easy with reviewed CRMs and with other other solutions like we were we were thinking about something like more difficult to to put in place so yeah okay. that's the main reasons. Thank you. you know, if I can add to that, am I? Your turn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just, just to add to that, I, I will say this. Our, the biggest obstacle to migrating off Bullhorn is exactly what Charlie said. There was an enormous amount of apprehension and fear centering around that. Um, and we actually had gone through a migration before with another product I won't name. And it it bombed. You know, half of our resumes and whatnot didn't make that migration, whatever the number was. It was a horrendous amount. So much data just didn't make it. And, you know, there was there's a lot of fear because your entire business is built around 
being able to work with that information. And if that information goes away, that costs you an enormous sum of money. Yeah. And I have to say the migration we did with uh, Recruit CRM was easy. I'm not going to say it was painless, uh, <laughs> but it was very easy. It was efficient. And there was a lot of hustle you guys did to make sure it went it went correctly. And, and it did go correctly. And it's been, uh, I can't imagine a smoother transition we could have possibly had. And, and that was, that and made me I, feel real good about the move we made. I'll say that. And, and I might add with an, and Charlie, Charlie probably doesn't know this and no one else does. Um, the GTN bullhorn data migration was the most tight and time sensitive we've ever done because yep. they came to us on a Wednesday uh, and said, uh, <laughs> bullhorn, bullhorn is closing access or we're closed bullhorn and it's out in three days. Uh, we want to get go live on Monday, right? <laughs> And and we did not finish that migration, no, we, day, but we we uploaded some spreadsheet yeah. data to just just like have something to work on for like a week, while while that migration happened over the next week or two. But that was that was insane because I remember just being flabbergasted on that call and just not knowing what to say. Um, yeah, but you delivered, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that yeah. was uh, yeah. Please, please good. don't. Do that. Well, th that actually gets back to Bullhorn because what our plan was. We didn't, to be really blunt, I had forgotten we needed to give them 60 days notice that we were going to terminate. Well, um, or actually, I did know that. But what I didn't realize was our contract was up for renewal. They would not allow us to renew for two months or three months or half yeah. a year. No, it was you renew for a full 12 months or to heck with you. Once again, lack of, <laughs> they didn't Empathy. care, right? Empathy. And so um, to be really blunt, we we played a little game with Bullhorn and we dumped a lot of pressure on Sean and Sean, you know, stood up, said, I'm going to get this thing done. And he made it happen. Yeah, And our team made it happen. Uh, we, we, I don't know if they are knowing that or not, but we still have access to, to Bullhorn. I don't know if they forgot to get it or not, but nothing <laughs> changed. Nothing changed. So it wasn't an <laughs> We actually uh, that, did the same thing, Charlie. We we, uh, we actually did re-sign our agreement with uh, Bullhorn for another year. What we did is we just chopped the licenses drastically. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that but, was... Tim, Charlie's it, saying they're it, not it, paying it, for it. it. They paid for zero licenses. They just haven't turned it off. Oh, well, you know... <laughs> for all, all their licenses. <laughs> you got a they, better deal than I did. If they the, want the them, problem, they turn it off. <laughs> yeah, the, the problem with that is getting people to actually move over. Yeah. And I had to be, a, you know, I've been through that migration before and people hate change. And oh my gosh, I, I'm used yeah. to doing it this way. Now I've got to do it that way. And you can't allow them to tinker in the old database. You just have to say, okay, Friday, five o'clock, that's it. It's done. You have to go over here and then you have to lock them out. Even if you, because if they're gonna they're gonna use that old database as a crutch because it's familiar to them and they're so used to it. Used and the best it. way to get them to jump into that new database is just flip that switch and say, "This is it. You have Turn no choice. Off. Done." Turn it off. And now, now I'm I'm gonna go to the next slide, which is all about making us feel good. Which is uh, <laughs> what do you enjoy the most? You know, Charlie, what do you like the most about about working with Recruit CRM? And what what does your team as well like the most? Right, based on your your interactions with them. Um, yeah, so I'm still using it um, as a as a tech recruiter. So I'm using it the same way everyone does in, in the company. <clears throat> and um, actually, I, I'm I'm loving the ease to use when sourcing on LinkedIn, for instance, candidates and and send them directly into the ATS and making them move easily uh, from one stage to the other one. So that's where uh, I'm like. That's that's what I'm enjoying the most uh, on a daily basis. Um, the plugin actually is very um, is very powerful uh, as you can do like quite a lot of actions from from it directly uh, from LinkedIn actually. So um, that's that's something really uh, helpful for us. Um, and Charlie, um, have you tried the new off limits on on the extension where you can actually mark a client as off limits, and if someone on your team tries to source? People on LinkedIn from that company, it'll tell you off limits. Off limits. 
Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but that's why I wanted to say. Like, I love also to get monthly notifications about the new new release features. It's like each month, it's like scratching a, a grad of tickets. So, <laughs> so that's something like uh, I like to discover each month what can uh, be enhanced in our our way, the way we work. Uh, each month there is new features, and I love to discover them as well. <laughs> awesome, uh, Jim. What do you like? Hands down, the support. I I don't I use the database every day, but I don't use it much every day. Um, exactly. And so it's very easy for me to forget how to do a process. And so I'll go to somebody else. I'll go to Jared, somebody else here internally. But I also if I reach out to Shashank, I mean, I get an answer like that. Just boom, boom, boom. So the support, the responsiveness, hands down is my favorite part. Yeah. And, and the great part is now you have a na the name of a human and it's the same human helping you out and he knows you and he knows yeah. your business. Well, right. and he gets to you know, know me and my data. idiosyncrasies. <laughs> and... <laughs> and, uh, each person has their own kinks, right? For the lack of a better word. Uh, yeah. Works out. I also yeah. like the price. It's a lot cheaper. <laughs> and, and we'll, and we'll every single year automatically with like a like a forced renewal too. Uh, and Jared, what, what are your thoughts? What, what do you like the most? And, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of time with our team and the product. Um, yeah, I, I, I probably am you know, talking to our uh, customer manager two, three times a week on average and have been every week since we moved over. Um, obviously, ease of use has been nice. You know, there's there's been a lot of customization. We keep changing things internally to make things go faster. The automation has been great. Um, we just finished out three new automations today that should cut a lot of man hours for us internally. And, and can you um, give a few examples of that, Jared? Just like what what kinds of automations you guys are doing that, you know? Yeah, so things that would be, that we've automated, uh, or the things that we automated today were making sure job updates, new job openings, job closings, anything job related goes updated to the team of recruiters assigned to that job. The other one is um, automatic job closing. Once a job is placed, um, it closes out the job automatically. So you know, recruiters, account managers don't have to manage that process. And then the big one is automated onboarding. So we just finished that process. Once a candidate's moved into a placed status, uh, automatically creates placement record, automatically sends a basically an op what we would call our onboarding form to our accounting HR team. Um, and then right now we're doing the same thing for offboarding. So if we, you know, either cancel a contract, finish a contract, whatever, automatically creates the record for us in the system and then sends that off onto our um, HR teams to complete that placement record. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and we're going to be talking more about this uh, in, in, in the next slides as well. And I'll probably loop you back in, Jared, on, <laughs> on automation. Uh, now, just a, just a couple of slides. You know, we, we take great pride in like all of our uh, reviews and having having customers uh, love us. And that's 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 one of the ways people actually get compensated on our team. Uh, so every time someone does a call with with anybody on our team, they get like a little form and it's an optional form, but they can tell us if they like us, they love us. What do they like about talking to this person? So people people on our team are actually incentivized not to like expand revenue on each customer, like a lot of a lot of software businesses do, but get love from that customer. Because the idea is if someone loves you, they'll stay on, they'll use the product, they'll, they'll make more things happen uh, over time. Uh, now, this is on Captera. Captera is like Gartner's software review, uh, one of Gartner's software review websites, one of their main ones. Um, you know, this is this is an open side by side comparison with real data, real reviews. If you go to Captera, which is a again third party site, you can you can see this data. Uh, again, Bullhorn is not bad. They have they have a four point one. They have over a thousand reviews collected over twenty plus years. Uh, you 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 sort of see that hey, this is this is this is a decent product. Uh, what we have done is over the last seven years, and, and most of these reviews have come in over the last three or four years where we've really picked up traction, we've somehow managed to have a perfect five on customer service. And some of those, and that, that, that's prob that's because of the great people on our team, like, uh, like you know, uh, Diksha, who's Charlie's account manager, or Shashank, who's like Jim and Jared's account manager, who like really go above and beyond to like build those great relationships with 
uh, with the accounts and the and the users they manage, uh, and it just has better reviews, right? So these are this is completely again third party uh, reviews on the internet. Uh, now this is what some of our customers have 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 said about us. We have case studies with these companies too. Some here like Bluebird have moved to us. Uh, over from Bullhorn, these are in different countries. We've we've customers in, in here in Las Vegas, in 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 Central Europe, in in Amsterdam, in Greece. Like we've we've users everywhere across the world, and uh, you'll sort of see uh, reviews and case studies on our websites for all of them. And just a few things that we believe that make us stand out, and you know th this this alludes back to like one of the things Jim mentioned, right? One of the reasons he wanted to move was he. He was looking at how everything else around the world is evolving. There's like open AI, GPT, all this new technology coming in. And he wasn't getting all that tech in his business, despite spending like a bucket load of money for the lack of a better word. Right. And it wasn't, it wasn't being handed to him without, without basically someone selling something else to him. And these are the top three things where we really won. Like workflow automation is basically what Jared was alluding to earlier today when he said he's going to set up automations to create onboarding forms and offboarding forms and maybe invoices and commissions and, and so on. Uh, GPT integration is essentially, as you can see, it's an open AI integration. We've integrated with their API to, to allow you to do a fun, bunch of fun stuff. And then last but not the least is like candidate matching. So, uh, you know, for the, we, we, we have a feature where you can go to a candidate and look, find a lookalike audience of candidates. More recently, you can also create a job description and find candidates that would be a good fit for that job description and then uh, scale them up or down. And uh, workflow automation is uh, essentially a, a no code way for businesses uh, that are especially small and medium sized businesses with, with, with a handful or, or up to even a hundred or 200 consultants that don't really have like a full blown engineering and coding team in house to be able to connect all the tools they use. Where, you know, every time you you get a new job, you could auto publish it on LinkedIn. Every time you make a placement, you can automatically calculate commission, uh, send send a contract out to a contractor, create an invoice on a QuickBooks or a Sage. Uh, these, this is basically what allows you to create these automations between tools you use. And things as simple as like notifying consultants and, and then salespeople when a new job is in or a placement has been made or client is giving you feedback. Now, this is like a big screen with like a bunch of logos. So these are these are these. This is a portion of the apps that we can integrate with. Uh, there's well over a thousand applications you can integrate without writing code. It's just drag and drop workflows. And uh, and and I have a quick question here for 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 Jared. Right, J Jared, you're really involved in like using using workflow automation. For someone that's new to this stuff, how how long do you think it'll take them to like actually figure out how this works? Um, and to be quite honest, every time I have any type of automation or want to do anything, I've had my hand held the entire time. And and is uh, and just like Shashank, is that person easy to get hold of if you need help, or does it take a while? Or no, I mean he doesn't matter when I message him; he usually gets back to me, you know, within a half an hour. Perfecto, perfecto. And, and I'll jump on a call and. You know, for a long time there, we had a standing call every week just to go through updates and features and build outs that we were working on. And we've been able to kind of stop that. And we just kind of email check in once or twice a week now. That's awesome. And and one of the things I want to talk about here is this allows businesses to actually be a little more creative and forward thinking. Uh, very recently, like I think two weeks ago, uh, we had this company that works with us in Japan, like uh, a little over a dozen dozen recruiters on the team. They are trying to build their own candidate matching model using OpenAI. So what they have done is they've they've basically gotten an OpenAI account by themselves, and every time they successfully place a candidate into this a job, this is one of their use cases. They 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 put it in the audience of candidates that's a good match, and they they basically pump it into OpenAI. They do the same for rejections, and using that model, what they're doing now is every time a new job is created and you assign a candidate to a job or candidate gets assigned to a job, they automatically create a note on that candidate's profile through pushing that through OpenAI to give like a math score, right? And this is based on their data of their placements historically. And 
uh, and they not needed a programmer to do this. Like one of the founders, he's a little tech savvy. He just he just came in and set this up himself one weekend because he he really wanted to try it out. And it it just makes technology and tinkering a lot more accessible to like a normal person that's not necessarily like a coding whiz. Uh, now we're gonna quickly go over some things. I'm um uh, I'm host, uh, I'm hoping our our guests here have used some speakers here have used some of these. Uh, but we we basically try to push GPT into everything, right? So uh, when you write a note, you can ask GPT to like summarize it, make it look better, do something with it. When you're writing a job description, when you're creating a candidate summary, which is like an executive write-up, we can take a candidate's profile and like have GPT do a write-up. Uh, we, we can use GPT to create email templates. Uh, we're also soon releasing GPT email sequence creators where you can you can write a prompt that says, I want to create an eight-step sales email sequence uh, for this audience. And then the system will create like eight emails with like a ta few tasks in the middle and you can enroll people into those. Uh, this is sort of what matching looks like. You're able to like basically go in and find a list of matches. And then you're able to like scale how you want to alter those matches. Do you want to look for more people that have this, the same job description, language skills, and so on to like scale the rack, uh, rankings up or down. And then uh, we're, we're going to be sharing this slide deck later with the audience anyway, but if if you're looking to make a switch or just want to see what else is out there, right? You can just hit the link and uh, hit this link and set up a demo with somebody on our team who'll just show you the product. There's no expectations. Uh, we've had situations where we've talked to someone today and they start using Recruit CRM two hours later. And we've had situations where we talked to somebody in 2019 and they started using us in 2022. Uh, and I think uh, with, with Charlie and Urban Linker, it was uh, a little shorter. I think we talked to them and three months later they were using us. And I think with Jared and Jim, I think I'd spoken to Jared maybe a year before they actually started on Recruit CRM. And we had a few conversations uh, throughout that year. And uh, so, you know, feel free to like, just uh, have a no pressure conversation with us at any time. And I think uh, Chavi, it's, uh, it's on to you. Yep, all right. Just give me one quick second. Cool. All right, we'll now transition into our Q&A session. And all of our speakers will begin by answering a couple of questions that we've already received from some of you. But that's not all. We'll also be taking questions from all of you live. So please feel free to submit your questions using the Q&A options at the bottom of your screens. And Shanak and the rest will try to answer as many as possible. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so we have four questions here. Shana, do you want to start by answering the very first How one? How much time and money does it take in to move to recruit CRM? Uh, so to start the move, it doesn't actually take a lot of money if you have time, right? So you don't need to really buy all of your licenses or users up front. Uh, the, the, the cheapest way to start is essentially at $100 a month. You can get one user on our pro plan and uh, we'll assign you an account manager and you can start working with them to do the setup. There's no commitment there. So if it doesn't work out, you can you can basically cancel. Uh, and uh, so we're committed to making you succeed versus you putting in all the money and being stuck. Uh, and then um, we, we make the data migration from Bullhorn as cheap as possible. It's probably one of the cheapest that's available uh, in the market. And then even once you do decide to move to us, you're able to like stick to a month-to-month -month contract with no annual commitment or like have a mix of annual and monthly if you want an annual discount. Uh, and that's completely up to you. You can you can have any combination of monthly or annual users and without without any pressure. Uh, and I think these these questions are for me. So I'll just <laughs> I'll just go through them super quickly. Uh, uh, if you're getting a better deal from one of our competitors, why should we invest in you? Uh, I, I think in life, many, many times you get what you pay for. Uh, so there's there's always going to be something cheaper that's available. But at the end of the day, what you need to focus on is the ROI you get from an investment. I'm, I'm, I'm certain when uh, when Charlie, Jared, and Jim were looking at products, I'm, I'm sure they could find something maybe even half the price or one fourth the price if they really tried. And, uh, and the question is always like, what is the return on investment you'll get? Like, because you're normally not just getting a product for the money, you're getting a product, you're getting a team of people and humans that are going to help you use and implement that product and then probably listen to you and build more into that product, right? So that 
uh, that generally costs uh, costs some money. Uh, and uh, do you do demos in local languages? Yes, we do. Uh, we we started this more recently as we realized we had we had like a lot of interest in, in especially in Western Europe and in Latin America. So we uh, we do have uh, colleagues on our team, both sales folks and account managers that speak French, Portuguese, and Spanish. We're also getting some German speakers in soon. And Recruit CRM itself is available in English, German, French, Spanish, Portuguese uh dutch in a couple more languages so in japanese uh, for example so you, you can use it in any language and if we don't have a specific feature that you're looking for or something that that you want to get done it, it's sort of like what uh, and i think jim and jared alluded to this right when when you needed something done if it's if it's a good idea and it makes sense and it's 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 relevant to recruitment businesses in general we'll actually just build it for you uh, we won't send you an invoice that says, okay, this is custom development, $50,000 for three months. We'll just, you know, if we assume that that's a good feature, it just makes sense. We'll just build it, right? It, it, it's, and we're grateful to you for recommending that feature because now everyone else gets to experience a better product and, and we get better. Uh, but yeah, Shabi, I think, I think that's good. Do, do we have more audience questions for the speakers? Or... Yep, yep. We have one question from Stace. Uh, so what feature is missing according to your clients and what is what are the most impactful features on your roadmap? That's the next question that we have. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, the, Charlie, do you have, uh, I, I'd, I'd love to hear from actual actual uh, users of the product, right? What do you think we should be doing, Charlie, Jim, Jared, like one or two things that are missing that you'd love to see in Recruit CRM? Wow, I don't know. <laughs> so well, I think that's good. That's a good start. <laughs> yeah, all uh, the things that I that I want are already on the roadmap, which is great. Um, so we've been asking for some additional, you know, reporting um, that we think would be useful. Um, things like um, time to hire averages across clients, across uh, technical verticals. So. <clears throat> Example of that would be like on average, it takes us this long to fill a Java developer on um, this long to fill a SharePoint PM. Some of those, um, the KPI reporting I really like, so we can set goals individually for recruiters and account managers. Um, so that is something that's really nice. And then I know there's obviously the new release coming later this year that a lot of those things are already built in on. So that's exciting. Yeah. And, and the Jared's um, We've always had a KPI report. What we're actually releasing uh, the morning is the early Q4 <laughs> is, is we're releasing target reports. So you're going to be able to say, Jared has a target of like X. So you can set the target within Recruit CRM and you can send the person or their manager or both an email every week or every month that says this person has made, let's say, 40 phone calls and their target is 45 or 50 and they've done 80% of their target. Instead of you setting their targets outside and then just looking at the system to like see if someone's done it, it would like sort of all be into the system and email to you on a on a daily, weekly, monthly cadence, whatever, whatever, whatever you want. So that's 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 a good one. One of the other ones that we're excited for is the we're able to put everybody's revenue target on their homepage. Yeah. That's supposed to be coming soon. So they can every time they log in, they see their year day revenue target. And how uh, how much of it they've uh, achieved already? Yep, that'll come in at least in the same target KPI report. Uh, Jim, were you going to say the same thing, or I, I was going to say one thing. Obviously, with the uh, AI revolution we're experiencing, I haven't seen outside of what you've got integrated already with ChatGPT. I haven't seen an AI solution to make my job, my life my processes really significantly easier as far as the sales and recruiting component. There are back office things that are very exciting, but I'm not seeing that grand AI idea yet that makes me sit up and go, wow. And a lot of what I'm seeing in the AI world is very immature. What I like is you guys are staying on top of it where it's at. I would simply say, I want you to, to stay on top of AI because somewhere somebody's going to come up with an idea that is going to make a big impact in our business. 
And we're all going to want to get on that as quick as we can. I just haven't really seen it yet. Yeah, and once it out, once it's out, we need to be able to get it in our in recruit series yeah. with a couple months, right? Like that's the that's the main main game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if if I had to take that in again, right, and like distill it into like two or three, uh, maybe even four things we're working on. Uh, some of the stuff around more advanced reporting is is certainly one. Uh, another one is our, our team is currently experimenting with this. So it's, 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 it's nowhere near complete, so it's probably six months away. Uh, we're working on something called a global AI assistant, where you lit, you basically think of it as like a chatbot, but not with like a human for support, but more like a chatbot that you give access to all of your data within the CRM, where you can actually converse with it. So instead of putting in filters, you can say, hey, can you quickly show me the 15 clients I have in Dallas, Texas, or, or, or in a specific geography that I haven't called in the last six months. And it being able to just return the list, right? And in the standard list view. So instead of you having to query stuff, being able to sort of converse, converse via chat, but with your data, right? Where you're not, when you're, where you're not just using like GPT to, to give you prompts and create texts and like emails for you, where you're actually telling it to find stuff for you from within your database, uh, which might be harder for you to write like queries and filters, uh, filters on stuff like that. Uh, we're also planning, uh, and this is again, a longer term plan to build in tools for managing contract staff. So you can actually manage time, collect time sheets and manage contractors within recruit CRM uh, from a, from a time sheet perspective and then also a payroll perspective because through our workflow automations we have the ability to plug into tools like ADP and UKG Pro which are which are which are essentially payroll companies and if we add that middle layer in the middle where we allow you to collect timesheet data we're, we're basically able to complete that stack or that part of the back office workflow uh, uh, and another thing that we're introducing more short term mainly in the United States is payments being able to create invoices within Recruit CRM, uh, send them to clients and actually have like a link there for the client to pay into your bank account if 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 you would like, right? Uh, outside of uh, integrating with your own billing system. So, and then automatically marking those invoices as paid because we, we're able to track that the bank received the money uh, or your bank account uh, was debited with that amount because we're processing the transaction. Those are three or four things I'd say that we're really working on and really excited about. Okay, we have another question. This is coming from Zach. So he says, one issue we have with Bullhorn is the lack of training. We've been a 20-year customer and feel we aren't getting as much of the platform. Does Recruit CRM have implementation managers to help in the changeover? I'm sure we're not getting the most out of our data, but don't know where, what we're missing out on from a high-level process standpoint because we've been shackled to Bullhorn's way of doing things for two decades. So that's what Zach says. Oh. Uh, sounds sounds like Jim. <laughs> like like okay. Uh, I will. Uh, I'm going to spend ten seconds on this, and I'm, I'm going to leave it leave it to Jim, Jared, and Charlie. Uh, uh, at a high level, uh, when when you buy recruit CRM, you're buying a solution. So when you when you buy us to start with, we actually tell you not to give us all the money, and you just buy like three, four, five licenses for the people that want to try the product. Like we'll be involved in setting up the product. We will give you a dedicated account manager if you want to do automations. We'll give you an automation consultant too, sort of the person Jared uh, alluded to, and he said, someone just holds my hand and helps me do the automations. These people will sit with you and understand what data you have on Bullhorn, what are your systems, what are your hiring stages, what are the different fields of data you you collect in your business? Are you a perm business? Are you a contract business? Are you a mix? Are you a retained search business? And basically create anywhere from a two, three week plan to a 12 week plan, depending on the size of the team and scale of your operation, to like set the platform up. Uh, and, and these people are reasonably good. Now I'll, I'll sort of leave it to Jim, Jared, and Charlie to just talk about their experiences through implementation. Cause these are, th these, these are, these are businesses that have moved on to recruit CRM within the last 12 months. So it's a fairly fresh memory of like going, to, going through that process. So maybe, maybe Jim and then Charlie, do you want to, uh, Jared, do you want to talk about like what it was like? Uh, easy, painless. Uh, elegant, simple. The migration, the migration was a little painful, though, right, Jim? Like the the migrations always. Well, it was painful for you, not me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me. <laughs> true, true that. True that. 
you, you do have to spend two to four hours on the migration yeah. sheets. Maybe Jim, you got Jared or someone else to do it, but they did have to go through yeah. that sheet. Like confirm. <laughs> uh, I'll, what I'll say is, you know, we, we were on send out and then of course bullhorn for so long we had so much data that we didn't know what to do with um so i think my first migration sheet i did i think we had i mean between the the different clients jobs candidates all the different things we had we had i mean hundreds hundreds of filters that we had set up over the decade or more so my hand was held and we were given a lot of feedback on how to consolidate and how to scale that down quite a bit, you know, to simplify the data that we had and, and make it more useful for searching, more useful for usage. Um, you know, because we had a lot of data that meant the same thing, with the, but that was, you know, filters that we didn't always use. Um, again, as, as far as the migration of data, it was very, you know, very quick. I know we did it on a very short time scale. It was very condensed. But um, some of the data that we can now search and that we can see, it's it's become a lot easier. You know, unless you really were either a bullhorn, which I don't think many are, um, a lot of that data was hard to find in bullhorn because it could be, again, like for us, it could be held in so many different areas. You know, you could have data from one job or one placement across you know multiple areas of the system and it wasn't always easy to find for you know over you know, time I, I, it became easy because it was second nature but you know it wasn't easy for somebody new because there was five ways to do the same thing i'd like to i'd like to add in something there one of the one of the things that we knew was a problem with bullhorn is our data was not properly indexed and we end up having to go out multiple times and pay a third party to re-index our data inside Bullhorn. And the way this would manifest is you write uh, a moderately sized Boolean query. You run it one time and you get X results. You run that same query five minutes later and you get Y results. And so every time you ran it, you're getting different results. Which, what's going on here? Why am I getting 150 results in this search um, and I'm getting 162 results in this search and the people in the first results don't show up in the second results and vice versa. So we haven't had that problem since we made the migration over to our CRM. I'm just building on what Jared said. Good. The in I think a lot of people actually miss that on Bullhorn. It's an easy thing to overlook but it was something we were very keenly aware of. And that was a source of why can't you index our data properly? What is going on that you can't do that? Um, and it was never resolved until we left the platform. Got it. Charlie, you, how was the experience like? Like getting onboarded, going live, pain, no pain? Yeah, uh, I was about to talk about the database as well because I was, was pretty dirty as well. It was like uh, just like uh, James and Jared's. So so I will more talk about the, the, the training process and everything we've been through to, to be able to to be uh, perfect users of the solutions um, uh, in here. And like I've talked with Ditch for like maybe two weeks uh, every day uh, and... Uh, and uh, even now we are still uh, we are still uh, we actually have one meeting per week and uh, it uh, it allows us to uh, I'm able to ask any any question um, I'm asked internally and uh, I, I, I then have all the response and that's that's very easy but when you are getting embodied on the solution that's the the moment when the the CSM your CSM is taking the most of his time for for you and uh like you are getting capable on uh on srm uh, really quickly and uh, that's that's really smooth actually <laughs> awesome all right okay i think that concludes all the questions that we have for the day we're almost at an hour as well Ooh, we can move on to right. the next slide okay all right so yeah we've made it to the very end uh, all of you, like, would you like to, um, you know, uh, basically have any final closing remarks for our audience, like, before we, you know, conclude the event? 
yeah so 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 just to close out and i'll probably probably like stop the uh the this this the screen share here right like one again thanks charlie jim and jared for doing this really appreciate it it's it's like you know there's no benefit to you doing this right you're literally coming in and telling what our potential competitors hey uh we we we're now using the system life is great uh try it out too right so this is this is this is thanks right like just 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 that and and to everyone uh watching just just try it out there's there's no risk just just come in and see what else is out there and at the very least uh you'll be able to see a few things that you might even be able to do within bullhorn that you can take back and maybe nudge and pound your account manager to give you access to and uh, at the very best uh, you might decide that you're ready for something else in life and 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 try recruit CRM or maybe even something else out. Uh, Charlie, yeah. do you have do you have any closing comments? No, thanks for for having me here and uh, yeah, still a, still a pleasure to help. Thank you. And Jim, you know it's a it's a good platform. It's a good product with great service, and we're getting a better ROI with the tool than we ever did with Bullhorn. Um, I, I'm just very pleased with how everything's worked out. And I would encourage anybody, if you've got any questions, uh, you're more than welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn and ask away and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Yeah, and, and you should you should follow Jim on LinkedIn anyway. He has these daily videos that he drops called Bright Bombs. They're super fun and interesting. Uh, and they're they're informative too. So like you, you want to follow him. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, uh, no, we, we have we have Jared's comments left. Yeah, sure. Um, I I don't think there was a product I didn't market or I didn't do a demo on um, last year when we decided to make a move. Um, <clears throat> probably dozens. Um, every major player in the space we we demoed. At the end of the day, I think um, we made the right choice. You know, everybody that we've worked with within Recruit has been helpful. Um, has made moves to help us be better when we ask for something or, you know, showed us the way to do it correctly. Mm -hmm. My team has been able to reach out individually anytime they have questions. Um, you guys have done multiple, you know, trainings with us uh, at different times. And it's just, there's been a lot of handholding needed, especially at the beginning. But, um, you know, we've uh, been happy with the decision we made to move. Awesome. That's that's a great way to end it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so right. much, guys, for all of your closing remarks. And that concludes the session for the day. And thank you for all the audience members and all of our panelists for joining and participating. We have dropped a couple of links in the chat box now. So like if you'd like to learn more about our features and our product, go head over to recruitcrm.io. For weekly discussions on all things about recruitment and technology, we also have a blog. So you can check out our blog as well and also subscribe to our newsletter. And we're also excited to continue all of these discussions and conversations on our social media channels. So we've dropped all the links in the chat right now. You can go and follow us for the latest updates and resources as well. And we look forward to connecting with everybody once again uh, in our next webinar. So yeah, have a fantastic day and see you soon. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.